After reading the title of this video, you may be confused about what it refers to. Unlike most of the discussions on the channel that attempt to explain well-known aspects of the story and world, the other is probably the most obscure part of the Control universe. Unlike the theory about Chester Bless, which had a wide range of evidence to support it, this term only gets mentioned a handful of times throughout the game and its DLCs. As such, this video will be largely focused on theory crafting rather than explanation. The goal is just to start a conversation on the topic. For this one mystery, I'd like to have everyone's input on it, so let me know in the comments what you think. Before we begin, I recommend catching up on the creation of altered items and who is Chester Bless videos as they will be relevant. During both of these, we spend a good deal of time discussing the jukebox as it is a perfect case study for various aspects of the lore. This object was normal before someone from the Blessed Organization serviced it and caused the altered effect of translocation. To quote from the file, when this record is played in the object, anyone within earshot is translocated for as long as the album is playing. Upon closer examination though, the clue that cracked open a new lead is the record itself. The repairman from the Blessed Organization appears to have switched out the music and replaced it with one of their own. The description states, A classic 1950s jukebox made by Songmaster Entertainment LTD. The jukebox was found with a single record inside, titled A Song for the Others by Redacted. Investigating the identity of these so-called others led me down a rabbit hole. Since we know the Blessed Organization altered the jukebox, it is a reasonable assumption that they placed the record inside. This gives us a link between them and the others. At this point, I went into the game script and searched the term other for additional references. Control had over 200 instances of this word being used, and after going through all of them, a few interesting data points popped out. The first of which appeared in a hotline call from the board. Titled Objects of Power, the board concluded the call by asking Jesse to ignore the message. Objects of power are holders slash 665 to the other slash blessing. We hold the reins slash law. The board, a group of entities with far more knowledge than we do, considers the other and blessing to be synonymous concepts. If objects of power are holders to the other slash blessing, then this strengthens the link between them. Unlike altered items, objects of power have developed a link to the astral plane and the board, it is known that they facilitate objects of power binding itself to a peri-utilitarian. They truly do execute the law and hold the reins. As we have an established link to the Blessed Organization, it appears they took their name from whatever this blessing or other is. With this circumstantial connection, I began to revisit all the activities of the paracriminal organization and Chester Bless, looking for additional supporting evidence. This next data point is entirely speculative, but based upon the way the controlled universe functions, it is a possibility. Chester Bliss's first documented appearance was in the Surfboard Procedures document. The Guru Surfboard amplifies self-confidence for the individual who touches it. The background of the item is illuminating. The items came to the Bureau's attention through a popular nationwide tour of speaking engagements, advertising the item as a proven miracle worker especially for those afflicted by personal shortcomings. This self-help course was called The Power of the Board. It was created and operated by a man, Chester Bless. Collective consciousness and groupthink are powerful forces in this setting. The more people who believe in a thing, the more powerful it becomes. When a group of people around the world begin to believe in the power of the board, it may have an effect on THE board. It seems like too much of a coincidence that an operative of the Blessed Organization would be involved in this effort. Even though the speaking tour referred to a surfboard, their ears could not differentiate the difference. All they heard was the wonders of the board. A form of worship was created during these events. There may be another link to this type of thing happening dating as far back as 1920. Since the earliest documented case of the Blessed Organization was in 1968, I'm unable to say with certainty that they were involved here. Regardless, a popular cigarette brand was called the Black Pyramid. For anyone who smoked these, they would, in a way, ritualistically give worship to the pyramid. Based upon the evidence so far, a hypothesis is formed. 
The Blessed Organization has an unknown relationship with the Board and are actively providing a means of worship. This brings us back to the riddle of the jukebox. A song for the others was a deliberate choice when creating it. But who or what is this other? And more importantly, how does it relate to the Board? Another clue just happens to be right under our noses in the very first message the Board ever sends to Jesse. Testing, testing, testing. We are broadcasting from the Pyramid slash Other. They assert here that the Other and the Black Pyramid are not only interchangeable things, but where they are physically broadcasting from. With this in mind, the Other could be referring to the Astral Plane, or it could be referring to a separate place entirely. There is not really enough information to say. At this point though, we have a tangled web that shows there is a link between the Board, the Other, and the Blessed Organization. We know that the board facilitates binding objects of power to pair utilitarians. The Blessed Organization are paracriminals, known to create both altered items and objects of power, while disregarding a loss of life involved with it. One last data point may give us what we need to get a clearer answer to the question. What is the other? The most information we get is found in the most unlikely place. Outside of the mail room is a whiteboard with scribbling all over it. Let's read it all together. Somewhere along the line, things went weird. No one was sure how this happened, whether it was something caused by someone or something, or if it just happened by itself. There were a lot of stories. Everyone had a theory of how it happened, of which maybe the weirdest and perhaps only fittingly singled out here was the talk about a strange golden space helmet that someone had found and a secret research project to replicate and manufacture those helmets. It was said that the helmet opened a way to another place, different from this one, but whether that other was actually a place or just something that came over you when you were wearing the helmet, no one knew, not even the scientists in charge of the project. In any case, or so the myth went, Helmets, or the people trying them on, brought the other closer to here. Things got weird. Things that people had learned to take for granted, like technology and physics and religion and time and space, just stopped working like they used to, stopped altogether, or became something different. There were lots of accidents and terrible catastrophes at first, and most people died and disappeared, and in some places it rained flowers, and in others, blood and sometimes the other was very close and everything rippled and warped, as something big in the other passed close by, and sometimes it was even almost like the old times. In time, people adjusted and adapted and learned to use the new things and laws to fix some of the old, but mostly, as time went by, people just forgot that things had ever been different, and the weird became normal. Everyone, at least everyone who believed in the myth, thought that the golden helmets and those who wore them were bad, and they seemed to have a point. For those in the golden helmets, even while they were hardly ever seen anymore, were often, on those rare occasions, doing bad things. Luckily, the other gave many people strange abilities, and a few heroes rose to fight the bad things. And there were lots of these bad things, and lots of good things as well, but now, even more than before the other, Things were ambiguous and never simple or clear, and people rarely could tell the good from the bad. In any case, things went on, and it was almost never boring. If the information here is accurate, the other is the origin of all weirdness in the Remini Connected Universe. Somehow, people weakened the fabric between the main world and this other world. A breakdown of the laws of physics followed. Plagues right out of the Old Testament became commonplace. The other facilitated heroes to attain strange abilities to fight against the bad things caused by the strangeness. Some of these individuals were good, some were bad. Over time, people forgot the world before this event and the weird became normal. Scientists attempted to recreate the space helmets. After all of this, history continued leading to where we are now. Whether or not this information is accurate or simply a parable to describe historical events, we learn a lot. This other appears to be another reality and the source of the paranatural energies witnessed throughout Control. Objects of power are stated by the board to be holders of this other. The giving of abilities to the heroes sounds identical to the binding of OOPs by the board. 
The last bit that needs to be connected is the scientists attempting to replicate the helmets. These are links to the other. Okay friends, it is time to throw on our tinfoil hats as we are going into pure theory mode. Blessed Organization created the jukebox using a song for the others, its effect is one of translocation. Is it possible that this was a failed attempt at replicating the gold helmet? One mystery about the Songmaster jukebox is that it is classified as an object of power. The case file states that any attempt to bind it results in death. Without any further information, I have two theories. Either A, the board does not want to bind it to an FBC agent, or B, it is already bound to another unknown individual. Since the Blessed Organization created it, is it possible the board bound it to someone from that faction? And if so, what reason would they have for facilitating a competition to the Bureau? One possible solution to this question is tied to the original NSC floating near the formation. It is stated that some unknown display of Northmore's power caused this prison to translocate to the same place the jukebox takes you. Is it possible that it is bound to Northmore? Again, this is pure speculation, so I am interested in hearing your thoughts. However, there are two other OOPs not bound to Jesse. One is the ashtray and cigarette that is believed to still be bound to Trench. The last is the slide projector. Based upon the precedent seen so far, the innate effect of the object is controlled by binding it. For example, the floppy disk throws things around the room, and once bound allows the binder to use telekinesis. If the slide projector creates openings to other realities, what would happen if one bound it to themselves? Would they be able to create these portals at will? It is conceivable that with the failure of the jukebox in 1988, the slide projector was only another attempt to replicate the gold helmet. I also find it suspicious that the pseudonym of Chester Bless is associated with the Blessed Organization, while a teacher in Ordinary is named Mrs. Chester. This is very likely a coincidence, but something to keep in mind. Either way, if the Blessed Organization could be linked to the Ordinary AWE, it would explain why the projector randomly showed up in the dump site. Altered materials are an ingredient in their creation, so unless some were coincidentally and annoyingly dumped in Ordinary, someone had to be behind it. From here, I have only two more questions. If the Blessed Organization is trying to create a pathway to the Other, what is their motive? Are they attempting to gain direct access to the Other slash Blessing which fuels paranatural phenomenon, or are they opening a door to something to come back into our reality? In regards to the whiteboard text, is this description of the Remedy vs. Origin one of the past, or an allegory describing the events currently happening in Control and moving forward? Whichever way we interpret it, it must mean something. I appreciate everyone following along with my ranting and raving on this topic. The Other is the most mysterious aspect of Control lore so far, and any conversation on it will require tinfoil hat theories. My goal for this video is not to explain a part of this world, but to begin a conversation for the community to discuss. Please drop your theories in the comments and let's work together to figure this out. I will leave the video on these closing words. The existence of these golden space helmets seem to have been something of a legend. Down in the investigation sector, Jesse comes across a helmet with a golden visor, an object that an unknown entity named Fra is so desperate to reclaim. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.